Good morning, everybody. Do come and take a seat. We're going to be starting in 30 seconds. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Let's begin with the traditional Easter greetings, which will be on the screen for you. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great power. He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. What a wonderful message to proclaim we have on this glorious Easter day. So let me say, Happy Easter. Let's pray that we have a joyful day celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Well, my name's Steve Short. I'm the Associate Minister here at St Paul's. I'll be leading our service this morning and our vicar Dan will be coming to speak to us from God's word a little bit later on. A particular welcome to you if you're a visitor among us today. It's lovely to have you with us. Maybe you're visiting family or, or whatever. It's uh, great to see you. Uh, great to see some who've kind of moved away and are living elsewhere but have come back for Easter too. That's really great to have you back with us. Uh, this morning we have uh, an all-age service, so our children's groups aren't running. They're, we're all staying together, which is great, uh, which means uh, we don't mind at all if there's a little bit of noise from some of the very young ones. Uh, that's all part of our worship together. Uh, we're going to be celebrating the Lord's Supper, which is also a great joy on Easter Sunday, isn't it? And we welcome anybody to the Lord's table who knows and loves the Lord Jesus and is in a right relationship with him. And if you're a visitor and it's your normal custom to uh, take the Lord's Supper, then do feel free to join us at the table. You will be most welcome. Uh, not much to say by way of notices this week. Just one thing, if you're a regular member of our church congregation, which is to read your bumper edition of the, uh, the weekly news. It's two weekly news. It covers today and next Sunday. And there's everything in there you need to know about what's going on. The only thing I want to highlight is that with our annual parochial church meeting coming up relatively soon, uh, if you want to be on our electoral roll and so able to stand for church council or to nominate people for church council and to vote at that, then you need to be on the electoral roll. Uh, do have a word with Dan or me afterwards. Um, there are forms on the table at the back to fill in, and if you're not quite sure about whether you should or shouldn't, just have a chat with one of us and we'll help you through that. Final thing I want to say is thank you to Maggie and the team for uh, putting together such beautiful flower arrangements uh, today. The church looks beautiful, doesn't it? So thank you very much for coming in and making all that effort using the gifts God has given you to make our church look so lovely. Well, we're going to sing our first song in a moment, uh, singing, as you may not be surprised, of the wonderful news of the resurrection, the great joy that death is defeated because Jesus rose from the dead. And so, as the music begins, do uh, stand if you're able and join with me in singing, See, what a morning. i 
please do be seated and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you that death is defeated, that love has won, that Christ has conquered. Lord, we thank you that we can sing those words and we can proclaim his name, the risen Lord Jesus, with such confidence because of all that he has achieved for us on the cross. And Father, so we pray now that everything that we do as we bring you our praises this morning, as we read your word, as we hear it preached, as we pray, as we enjoy fellowship together, Father, please may everything we do and say honour the risen Lord Jesus and bring glory to his name, the name that is above all others. And we pray it in his precious name. Amen. Well, sometimes uh, people may ask you the question, why did Jesus have to die? And of course, the answer to that question really is, he had to deal with the problem of our sin. Sin is such a small word, isn't it? Three letters, but it has such a big impact on life. It creates that barrier between people, but also between us and the love of God. That barrier, by the way, which is gloriously removed, isn't it, by Jesus' resurrection. But it's right, given that we still live in this world and we are still prone to sin in our weakness, that we come and confess our sins to God. So let's just take a brief pause, perhaps reflect on some of the things we know that already during the past week, or perhaps even today, we need to bring to the Lord and say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. And then we will use the words of confession. I'll read the light type and if you could respond with, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us, and help us. Some words from 1 Peter. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive in Christ, may reign with him in glory to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and for all eternity. Amen. Well, here we are. It's Easter. 
I'm back on this mic now. Thank you. Um, I'm going to need this one as well. Uh, I might need a little bit of help with something here. Um, uh, the hands are coming up. You don't know what I'm going to ask you. I mean, it could be a. Com- <laughs> it might be a com- nightmare coming your way, mightn't it? Um, but we're going to have a little bit of a think about something, uh, which is about what you or may not be expecting perhaps some kind of a surprise. Now I've got four things up here. Um, I wonder whether anybody's feeling a little bit peckish, slightly on the hungry side, and might like to have a biscuit out of my biscuit tin. Who'd like a biscuit out of my biscuit tin? Jonathan, come on up. Jonathan's there's my biscuit tin. Um, Favourite biscuit? Uh, Chocolate chip. Okay, you're in luck today. We could <coughs> help yourself, enjoy a biscuit, don't drop crumbs, because we've had the church clean. Oh. What is it? Well, there's two forks in here. Two forks. There could have been four forks, but there's not. There's two. No biscuits. <laughs> Definitely no biscuits. Well, <laughs> we weren't expecting that, were we? Maybe we were. Okay, Jonathan, sorry for your disappointment, but there might be a biscuit for you at the end of the set. Anyway, let's, let's try something else. Um, who, likes, who, who likes these things here? Does anybody know what one of those is? Sophie, come on. Actually, it's all in one family at the minute, but right. Do you like, do you like those eggs? You sure? Really? Okay. How do you open them? Okay, tear that off and see what's there then. Silence descends upon the room. Is this a real egg? Oh. What do you think? Is it a real egg? No. You sure? I think so. So what sort of egg is that? I don't know. Does it look like a real uh, a chocolate Kinder egg? No. No. <laughs> Take off a bit of paper, a bit more. Take off a bit more. Oh. It does look a bit like a yeah. real egg, doesn't it? Yeah. That's a real egg. Okay. Do you do you like boiled eggs? I don't know. <laughs> She doesn't know whether she likes a boiled egg. Okay. I've got a little treat for you. You can keep that. And you you can eat that instead of a chocolate egg later on. Thank you very much, Sophie. Okay. That was a bit awkward. Let's try something. Let's try something. Um, Anybody here like Smarties? Anybody like Smarties? Yes, come on up then. Right, have a look in there. What's in there? Coins. Coins? How many coins are in there? Tip them out and have a look. Oh. Nine. Nine coins in there. Okay, they're not all pennies, by the way. Do you know how much a tube of Smarties costs? No. Neither did I until yesterday. (laughs) The answer is an outrageous sum of money. (laughs) But actually what you've got in there is enough money to go and buy some Smarties. So that's a little bit fortunate, isn't it? Thank you very much. You can go and have a seat back home. We've got one one more here. Thank you very much. You can, um, yeah, yeah, go on, you can take that. Okay, I've got one more here. Um, Patrick, why don't you come and help me? Before you help me, do you like ice cream? Are you sure? Yes. Do you like ice cream that hasn't been in the freezer since nine o'clock this morning? (laughs) Yes. Okay. Come and have a look then. Hang on a minute. Here's a fork to eat it with. 
Go for it. What's in there? Some type of vegetable. <laughs> wow, happy days. Because all that chocolate's not good for you. A bit of cabbage. Can't go wrong with a little bit of cabbage, can we, surely? So, do you know what? Here's the thing. You can keep that. <laughs> what do you think about that? Yeah, OK. <laughs> Great stuff. That can be added into dinner. Thank you. Please give my helpers all a bit of a round of applause. <laughs> are not quite as we expect them, are they? Sometimes things that we expect that don't come off are a bit of a disappointment. Sometimes things that we don't expect actually provide maybe a positive thing, like enough money to buy two tubes of Smarties or something like that. Sometimes there are things going on in life that we just don't expect. Well, in a few minutes after our next song, we're going to have a Bible reading, and in that Bible reading, we're going to discover something of a surprise, something that wasn't quite as expected as we might have thought, or certainly the people on the day. But actually, it turned out all right. Spoiler alert, you know the end, don't you? As we'll sing in the third verse of our song, it turned out great because Jesus rose from the dead. So we're going to sing, Who is this man? Um, when the music begins, do let's stand and sing together. King of kings, he's the Lord of lords. He can heal the sick, he can calm the storm. He's the Son of God, he can save us from sin, and he calls us to follow him. Jesus met a man covered in disease, knew he needed to be clean. Jesus just touched him, that his ease was gone. Only God can do that. Who is this man? He's the King of kings, he's the Lord of lords. He can heal the sick, he can calm the storm. He's the Son of God, he can save us from sin, and he calls us to follow him. Jesus and his friends caught in a storm, looking like they're gonna drown. Jesus yelled quiet and the storm was calm. God can do that. Who is this man? He's the King of kings, he's the Lord of lords. He can heal the sick, he can calm the storm. He's the Son of God, he can save us from sin, and he calls us to follow him. Jesus on a cross was crucified, darkness covered all the land. After three days, Jesus rose again Only God can do that Who is this man? He's the King of kings He's the Lord of lords He can heal the sick He can calm the storm He's the Son of God He can save us from sin And He calls us to follow Him Yes, He calls us to follow Him Are you going to follow Him? Great stuff. Do uh, take a seat, please. Um, Peter's going to come and read to us from the Bible in a moment. Let me just pray before he does that. Father, we do thank you so much for the Lord Jesus, and we thank you that you have told us all about him, his life, his death, and his resurrection in the Bible. I pray, Lord, now as Peter comes to read it to us, and then as Dan speaks to us from it, that as those things happen, we would see Jesus clearly. I pray in his precious name. Amen. Amen. Uh, so our reading this morning comes from the Apostle of John, chapter 20. Beginning at the first verse. Early on the first day of the week, whilst it was still dark, 
Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one that Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the stripes of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Steve, it's great to see everyone. And um, perhaps already had some eggs this morning. Yeah, it's a bit of chocolate, just, or is that broccoli? Anyway, (laughs) very good to see everyone. Now, there's a question, and we've been thinking about it already. Um, Have you ever said, I wasn't expecting that? I wasn't expecting that. Mm. I remember very clearly the day we went to our local hospital 17 years ago to have a second scan um, for Katie's pregnancy, we were, having, we were there early, we were having the scan early because we were moving house. And um, we went, to, and the doctor looked at us and said, you do know it's twins, don't you? <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. It was amazing. I perhaps looked like the chap who will appear on the screen. Yes, I was a little bit less handsome than that. I wasn't expecting that. And Katie certainly felt the same thing. Gulp. Wow. And on that first Easter Sunday, it was definitely, I wasn't expecting that moment, wasn't it? I wasn't expecting that, as we saw in our Bible reading. So let's look at the Bible and see what it says. Um, I'm going to need a couple of young helpers. Um, Who can help me? Uh, Freya, brilliant. Um, Ben, thank you very much. Great, so you've got your running shoes on. Good, good, good. We need those. That's good. We want no shoes. That's fantastic. Um, anyone else? One more. Patrick, did I see Pat? Oh, yeah, go on. Yep, brilliant. <laughs> right. Now, you're Mary, and you are Peter. So come over here. And you're John, right? I'm Ben. No, John. <laughs> John. For the purposes of dramatic retelling of the story... You're John, okay? Disciple. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, um, why, don't you, why don't you sit on the chairs? I've got some nice chairs for you. You can relax, look thoughtful. Yes. So when Mary woke up on Easter Sunday, she was really sad. No, sad. <laughs> you don't want to be sad, that's okay. We'll, we'll just imagine it. She was really, really sad, and everything she had hoped for had come to an end. Why had it come to an end? What had happened a couple of days before? Thank you. Jesus had died on a cross. And so she was very sad. She'd been following Jesus for all that time. And then, as she watched her master and dear friend Jesus die, burial garden and placed in a tomb belonging to a man called Joseph. 
And then a huge stone was rolled over the entrance of the tomb, because that's what they did. But now it's three days later. And very early in the morning, Mary just had to go to the tomb. Come on, Mary, why don't you walk to the tomb with me? Yeah, come on. We're walking to the tomb. I'm not, I'm not really here. I'm just showing you where to go. And you're really sad, but you want to be alone. You want to be near the body of Jesus. You want to try and find comfort. And um, you're just full of sadness and full of tears. And um, you want to get to that tomb. Well done, Freya. And when she gets there, Freya, here it is. When she gets to the tomb, she gets the shock of her life. The massive heavy stone that was over the entrance has gone. It's been rolled away. She wasn't expecting that. That's impossible. So what are you going to do? So she runs to go and tell Peter and John, can you do that? Can you run that way we can? Run. She runs. It does say that in the Bible. Check out the Bible. She ran to Peter and John, and she goes to tell them the news. And you can hear the desperation in her words as she tells them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb. And we do not know where they have laid him. That's verse 2. And the only way she can explain it is that someone, maybe those in charge, or maybe the soldiers or some robbers, have taken the body of Jesus away. And this is the only conclusion she can draw, that someone's taken the body. And of course, you and I might have thought the very same thing, mightn't we? Because there doesn't seem to be any great expectations here. You see, what else could it be? Dead people don't come back to life. So the body surely has been taken away. And clearly, Peter and John are also not expecting that. So you scratch your heads. Excellent. Oh, have you got nits? No. <laughs> so you're scratching your heads. You don't, you're not expecting this either. So what are you going to do? Because they might have been down at the garden tomb and waiting if they thought Jesus might rise again. But once they've heard Mary's story, they're really eager to go and check out what has happened. How do we know they're eager, folks? What does it say in the Bible? Verse 4. What do they do? They run. So can you run? Run to the tomb. And they left Mary behind. Well done, John. And John, you got there first. You won the race. Well done. You won the race. And um, so you go to the tomb. And you have a look in. Don't go in. Don't go in. Look around the corner. What can you see? You can see some linen cloth. But you're not going to go in. You're not going to go in. But not far behind, John. No, stay there. Stay there. It's okay. Stay there. You're just looking around. And then Peter arrives. But you're really eager. You go straight past John and into the tomb. And what do you see? You see the linen strips lying there as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. Right, you can come out now. And listen to this. It says in the Bible, the cloth, the cloth was folded up by itself. The, the, the one that was around his head was separated and folded by itself. You see, a couple of days before that, Joseph and Nicodemus, some people from the council, the ruling council, had wrapped Jesus' body really well. They would have done an excellent job. And um, there's the linen in there. When Jesus raised his friend Lazarus from the dead, he came out of the tomb and all his bandages were still on him. And they had to help get, get him out of them. But these have been left really neatly in folded up. As if Jesus' body had simply passed through the linen. So, John went to have a look as well. Off you go, John. Have a quick look. You see, John and Peter, they weren't expecting that. They weren't expecting that. Mary was right. 
The tomb is empty. The tomb is empty. You are right, Mary. No, no, you can stop now. And the linen that was wrapped around Jesus' body is still there. They couldn't believe it. His body couldn't have been stolen or moved by the authorities because they would have kept the linen. They would have kept Jesus' body wrapped in the cloth. Did you understand that? They wouldn't have removed the cloth, would they? They would have kept the expensive linen. And so for John, only one conclusion could be reached. John, where are you? Do you want to stand up? Only one conclusion could be reached. Can we see that in verse 8? What's John's reaction? As soon as he saw the empty tomb and the linen cloth lying there, he believed. He believed. He believed that Jesus had been raised from the dead. Just like everyone else, whether it's Joseph and Nicodemus who took the body down and put it in the tomb, or Pilate and the soldiers who had made sure Jesus was dead, or the Jewish authorities, or all the other disciples, John did not expect that. You and everyone else. He didn't expect his master and friend Jesus to rise from the dead. But standing in the empty tomb with the linen, he believed Jesus is risen. Isn't that wonderful? You can go and sit down now. Go and sit down. Jesus is risen. You can smile and smile. Although you can go and sit in your normal chairs. These are the... And if Jesus has risen from the dead, that changes everything forever. Everything Jesus had said and done was true. Everything he said about the forgiveness of sins, everything he said about his death, paying the punishment that our sins deserve, it's all true. It's come true. Jesus has risen. That is God's verdict on his son's sacrificial death for us, to raise him from the dead. Yes, the sacrifice is a right and good one. And death no longer has its hold on us. Jesus is alive. Now, lots of us here truly believe that, don't we? that Jesus did not stay dead, that he rose again on that first Easter day and he's alive today. We believe it and we rejoice. And even when we're having a hard day, even this morning, we are joyous because our future is secure. Whatever's happening today, our future is secure. But it might be there's some of us here who are not sure. I don't know what you believe, but there's no better news than this. Wouldn't you say, if it were true? Next week, we're going to read how Jesus then encountered Mary. And her tears stop. Her sorrow turns to joy because she's met the risen Jesus. And that's true. When we meet Jesus, until we meet Jesus, there will be sorrow. There will be death because it hangs over us. But once we understand Jesus is God's son, he came to the cross for our sins, and he rose again, it changes everything forever. Because all who trust in Jesus, who take his hand, sin is dealt with forever. Death is conquered forever. A relationship with the Lord God who made us is now a reality Forever, all because of Jesus. He is heaven's champion. So no more tears, Mary, no more tears. Well, perhaps when it comes to the resurrection, you weren't expecting that. Perhaps you're not yet convinced, but the evidence is overwhelming. You need to look into it, really. We have these compelling eyewitness accounts We have non-Christian historians at the time speaking of these things. And for that fact, today, you and I have more evidence than John did standing in the empty tomb. If if, um, If we wanted to, please check it out. I've put a few copies of this, the love story. This goes through some of the evidence. Um, Do take a copy. If you can't find one at the back, because they've all been snaffled, have a word with me and I'll get one to you. Or please take a John's Gospel. We've got lots of those. Read the evidence, the eyewitness accounts. 
but do check it out. That's what the disciples did. They ran to the empty tomb. They ran. What did they do? They ran to find out. So let's do that. The news is our only hope. The news of the resurrection is our only hope. And it's worth running for. So happy, happy Easter. Let me say a prayer. Our loving Father, we thank you for the hope of the empty tomb. Thank you that Jesus is risen. That whatever's going on today, that you have secured our future when we trust in you. That we can have peace, peace with you forever. So Lord, daily we pray that you would convince us and convict us that Jesus is risen. Lord, we thank you that you have made us your Easter people. And by your spirit, we pray more and more as those Easter people that running the race marked out for us, we will walk with you and talk with you until we run into your arms on that final day. Help us all to understand this Easter joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Easter, everybody. I was really struck this week by writing the prayers for today that when we get to this glorious future that Dan has just been talking about, those of us who lead the prayers on a Sunday morning, we're going to need a new job. Most of the things that we're about to pray for, they won't need praying for. We're going to pray for a place in the world where there's war, but because of the cross and because of the resurrection, there won't be any war to pray for. We're going to pray for one of our mission partners. But when Jesus returns, there won't be a single person who hasn't heard of him. We're going to pray for some people who are not very well. But because of the cross and because of the resurrection, when we get to heaven, there won't be any sickness to pray for healing from. I'm looking forward to that. Going to use our usual responses, but with a slight change this morning. When I say, risen Lord Jesus, in your mercy, can you respond here our prayer? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the joy of Easter morning. Thank you that because of your death on the cross and your resurrection from that empty tomb, that we can be sure that all the sins of the entire world have been paid for and dealt with once and for all. Thank you for such a clear demonstration of something so profound and complicated. Lord, we're sorry that your beautiful world is wrong in so many ways because of our sin. Thank you for taking all of our mess, all of our self-centeredness, all of our pride, and burying it in that dark, cold, horrible tomb. And thank you that on Easter morning, what the disciples found was not loads of messy sin, but a neatly folded burial cloth that wasn't needed anymore, because you had dealt with death, and now you are risen. Risen Lord Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we can't wait for the day when we will enter heaven with you. The price you paid on the cross bought us a room in your house forever. What a gift to such an undeserving lot of people. We can't wait to be in a place that is exactly as you intended it to be. You as our God and us as your people, with no sin to get in between us. Please would you help us to remember every day that this is where we are going. Please help us to be joyful in you every day because you died and rose again. 
Risen Lord Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our mission partner, Ruth McKee, and the Shalom Project for children with special needs in Peru. Thank you for all that Ruth is able to do there in your name. And thank you for the other staff that work alongside her. Thank you for the Bible study that they've been able to start up for parents. And we pray that through reading your word and through getting to know the Latin link workers, that many of these parents would come to know you. Risen Lord Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the ongoing war in Ukraine. In the light of your resurrection and the promise of eternal life, we see so clearly how badly the world goes wrong when we live without trusting in you. Lord, we pray for miracles in that region, that there would be changes in the hearts of people following the way of violence. We pray that convoys of aid would make it through to the places where it is needed. And we continue to pray for constructive negotiations to bring an end to this conflict. Risen Lord Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Lord, we pray for those we know who are unwell at the moment, and in particular this week for Sue Johnston. I'll just wait a moment while you name anybody else that you'd like us to pray for this week. Lord, we ask that you would bring your healing to each of the people we've named. Please give wisdom to doctors and medical teams that are treating them. Please also help them to draw close to you and to take encouragement from knowing you and your resurrection promises. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. It will be on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, we're going to uh, turn to song now, a great way to respond to the things that we've been hearing about. Uh, Our song, Oh Praise the Name, uh, takes us back to the glory of the Easter story. Jesus died, Jesus risen, and Jesus gloriously one day to return in all his glory. So do stand and sing with me, I cast my mind to Calvary.
to the Lord's Supper, we're going to begin with uh, a statement of what we believe, what we call the creed. I'm going to say the words in light type, and if you would respond to me with, we believe and trust in him, if you feel able to say those words, to encourage one another with what we believe. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? Source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come to the Lord's Supper, as I mentioned earlier, we welcome everybody to join us at the table. If you know and love the Lord Jesus, are trusting in him and are in a right relationship with him. And uh, if, you, if it's your normal practice at home to receive the Lord's Supper, then uh, do join us at the table. The supper is served from uh, one at the front here. If you come to the front, if you need alcohol-free wine or gluten-free bread um, and there'll be another over on the left if you're on that side of the church or towards the back perhaps use that one but come as the stewards direct you the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said peace be with you the peace of the Lord be always with you The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away... You did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross 
and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit upon us that this bread And this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And now we give you thanks, because through him you have given us eternal life and delivered us from the bondage of sin and the fear of death into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Pray the prayer of humble access, reminding us that we have no merit of our own on which to come to the table, but are entirely dependent on his We do not presume table, merciful Lord, trust in our own but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Well, please do come forward as the stewards direct you.
there is no more guilt to carry it was finished upon that cross death was once my great opponent fear once had a hold on me but the son who died to save us rose that we would be free indeed death was once my great opponent fear once had a hold on me but the son who died to save us rose that we would be free indeed yes he rose that we would be free indeed free from every plan of darkness free to live and free to love death is dead and christ is risen it was finished upon that cross onward to eternal glory to my savior and my god i rejoice in jesus victory it was finished upon that cross it was finished upon that cross it was finished upon that cross Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. Well, let's pray together the prayer after communion for Easter Sunday. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to death on the cross, and by his glorious resurrection, has delivered us from the power of our enemy. 
grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live in him with the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, what a great joy it's been, hasn't it, to meet together in the name of the Lord Jesus to celebrate his glorious resurrection. As we come to our final hymn now, we're going to sing together a glorious hymn that reminds us of all that God has done and all that God is doing in our lives. So as the music begins, do stand and sing with me, Thine be the glory. defeated death, that you have won the victory over sin. Lord, may our hearts and our mouths be full of praise for you because of the joy of all that means. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated. It would be wonderful if you are able to stay around to enjoy refreshments and to continue fellowship. I understand that there's uh, an egg hunt happening somewhere. Um, I can't see Jeanette, so she's probably gone to set the bear traps or something. Um, but I think the children may be, if you meet down here where your drinks are served, all, all will be revealed. So may God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.